Hi there crafters and creators. In today's video, I will show you the process of installing the sliding door system from Galmar with a soft close or stop catch. Throughout this video, I will use the insulation diagram provided when purchasing the sliding door system. Before we start this process, there's a few preparations that we need to do before the installation can start. Prepping for the installation, you need to keep in mind that the maximum weight per door is 30 kgs. The door has a minimum width of 750 millimeters and with the soft close, the door has a minimum width of 900 millimeters. The maximum internal width is 5,000 millimeters and the maximum internal height is 2,700 millimeters. Step two of preparation is deciding how many doors you want to use in your sliding door system. Just keep in mind, in this video, I'm using a carcass that is smaller. So please stick to the recommended measurements provided on the installation diagram. When using two equal doors, the calculation for the door width is internal width of your carcass divided by two, adding 16. And the door width for three equal doors will be the internal width divided by three, adding 16. Once you have your door width, you can calculate the panel width. The panel width is the final size that you will cut your door to. So that will be your door width subtracted by 44 to make space for the pulling profiles on either side of each door. To calculate the door height, you need to take the internal height of your caucus and subtract it by 37 millimeters to make space for the top and bottom profile. Now that we have the formula to calculate the sizes of our doors, let's measure our internal height and internal width. So starting with my internal width, I'm going to place my laser measurer horizontally across my caucus. So this tells me that my internal width is 800 millimeters. Next up, I'm going to measure my internal height. So placing my laser measure or tape measure vertically on the inside of my carcass, this shows me that my internal height is 700 millimeters. And now, using my internal height and width, I can calculate my panel width and door height. Now that we have measured our internal height and internal width, we can start calculating our door width. Starting with the internal width, which was 800 millimeters, we are going to divide that by the amount of doors. So 800 divided by 2 is 400 millimeters. And now we can add 16 for the overlap. So that will give us 416 millimeters. Using the door width, we can calculate our panel width. So starting with 416 millimeters, we are going to subtract 44 millimeters for the pulling profiles and that will give us an answer of 372 millimeters and that will be the final width that we cut our door to. Moving on to the door height, we are going to start with the internal height of 700 millimeters and subtract 37 millimeters to leave space for the top and bottom profile. And that will give us an answer of 663 millimeters. So our final door will be cut to 372 by 663 millimeters when using two doors. If you are interested in using three doors for your sliding door system, the calculations will be as follow. Starting with our internal width, 
of 800 millimeters. We will now divide that by three for three doors. And that will give us an answer of 266,6 millimeters. Adding 16 for the overlap, that will give us an answer of 282,6 millimeters. Now that we have our door width, we can move on to calculating our panel width. Starting with the door width of 282,6 millimeters, we are going to subtract 44 for our pulling profiles and that will give us a final answer of 238,6 millimeters. Now we can move on to our door height. So starting with our internal height of 700, we are going to subtract 37 millimeters for our top and bottom profiles and that will give us a final answer of 663 millimeters. I have chosen to work with two doors. Now that we have our panel width and door height, we can cut our doors to the final sizes. Using the formula that I just explained on the installation diagram, my panel width needs to be 372 millimeters and my door height needs to be 663 millimeters. Step three of our preparation is deciding what needs to be purchased. So for each door system, the following is required. A single door component set per door. So either a single door component set with a stop or a single door component set with a soft close. Each single door component set comes with two upper guides, two bottom rollers and two stops. Or when choosing the soft close, the component set will come with two upper guides, two bottom rollers and two soft closes. Also required is a top guide profile, a bottom guide profile and two pulling profiles per door. You will need pulling profiles on both sides of the door. The top and bottom profiles are available in two, three and five meter lengths and the pulling profiles are only available in 2.7 meter lengths. Now that we have done all our preparations, we can start with the installation. So step one of the installation will be cutting the bottom, top and pulling profiles to the required lengths. For the bottom and top profiles, you need to cut them to the internal width of your cupboard and for the pulling profiles, you are going to cut them to the door height. Remember that you need two pulling profiles per door on either side. So in our case, we are using two doors, so I need to cut four pulling profiles. Step two will be inserting the soft close mechanism or the stop catch into your top profile before fixing the top profile in place. If you are using the soft close option, the first step is going to be loosely screwing the square plate onto the soft close mechanism. The open side of the soft close mechanism needs to be facing the back of the cupboard and to the inside of the cupboard. So to show you how that would look, is sliding both mechanisms into the same slot. I'm ensuring that both of them, the openings are facing the back of your cupboard and the openings are facing to the inside of your cupboard, both 
in the same slot. Now that we know the orientation of the soft close, we can loosely screw the square plates in place. So on either end of your soft close mechanism, you'll find that there is a hole for a four millimeter screw. You will find four four millimeter screws provided. Insert your first screw into the hole at the end of the mechanism, and then orientating your square plate correct to fit into the gutter, we can loosely screw them in place. With the soft close mechanism and with the two square plates loosely screwed, this is how it should look. So this now allows us to slide the mechanism into place. Okay, so now that we have installed all four of our square plates, I have inserted my soft close mechanisms into my top profile ensuring that the orientation is correct. After your soft close mechanism is installed, this is how it should look. If you are using the stop catch options, then you will take both stop catch, ensuring that the open clip side is facing to the inside of your cupboard. I've loosened the screw at the bottom. Now I can slide it in. Okay, my screw is a little bit tight, which is fine. Okay, slide one into each end of the same profile. Okay, and now that my stop catches are loosely inserted, now I'm ready to install my top profile, um, making sure to not fix them in place just yet. Step three of the installation is to install your top, bottom, and pulling profiles. I'm going to start by installing my top and bottom profiles first. The method that I'm going to use for this demonstration is screwing them in place. I'm going to evenly space out my screws. Even though you're not going to see them, I always want them to look nice and neat. And then I'm going to pilot draw, countersink to ensure that the heads of the screws are nice and flush. And then I'm going to screw them in using 16 millimeter screws. This is just to show you an example. I used three screws on my bottom profile, pilot drilled and countersunk. And the same for my top profile. Three holes evenly spaced, pilot drilled and countersunk. Now I'm ready to fix my bottom profile in place. So just remember that the bottom profile needs to be recessed by 16 millimeter to ensure that the doors align properly. So I'm going to use a mitre square, draw a 16 millimeter line, and then fix my bottom and top profile into place.
Now I'm ready to install my top profile. So just for the last time, remember when installing your top profile that the open ends need to be facing the back of the cupboard. Okay, open end, open end, back of the cupboard. and flush at the front. Now we are moving on to installing the pulling profiles on each side of both doors. I'm going to be using the same method as installing the top and bottom profiles. I'm going to evenly space out my holes, pilot draw, countersink, and then installing both pulling profiles to either side of each door. Step four of the installation process is mounting the rollers and the roller guides. So, first of all, the rollers need to be mounted flush to the edges of the door and our roller guides need to be mounted 125 millimeters from the edge of the door to where the roller guide starts. Once again, just to recap, installing the bottom rollers. Ensure that both bottom rollers are flush to the edges of your doors. Okay, so with our bottom rollers fixed in place, we can now move on to fixing the top roller guides. Now I can take my mitre square and mark 125 millimeters from the edge of the pulling profile to the inside of the door. If you are using the soft close top roller guides, you have to ensure that both top roller guides are placed 125 millimeters from each side. Exactly like this. The edge of your top roller guide, 125 millimeters from the edge of your door. In my case, my doors are too small to have both soft closers 125 millimeters from each side. So I'm going to be using a soft close mechanism on the one side of my door and a stop catch mechanism on the other side of my door. Placing the stop catch flush with the edge and my soft close exactly 125 millimeters from the edge of my door. It's finally time to install the doors. Start by inserting your top roller guide into your top profile first and then the bottom rollers into your bottom profile. When installing, start from back to front. The doors are now installed and it is time to set the stop catches. So slide the doors into the closed position and slide your stop catch into the top roller guide pin. Once the stop catch is in the final position, 
you can mark the position of the stop catch, remove the doors and tighten the screw to fix the stop catches into their final position. To level the doors and for smooth operation, adjust the height of the bottom rollers. Be sure to remember to lock the lock nut in place when you are done adjusting. Another feature that you might like to add to your sliding door system is a cover strip hiding your top profile. This would help to make your sliding door system look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, but it is not a necessary component. As you can see, the Galmar sliding door system provides smooth opening and closing along with a soft close feature. We hope you found this video helpful Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.